Our reading this morning is a poem by Mary Oliver, a favorite of mine, a favorite of many of ours. She writes, what is the greatest gift? Could it be the world itself, the oceans, the meadowlark, the patience of the trees in the wind? Could it be love with its sweet clamor of passion? Something else, something else entirely holds me in thrall. That you have a life that I wonder about more than I wonder about my own. That you have a life courteous, intelligent, that I wonder about more than I wonder about my own. That you have a soul, your own, no one else's, that I wonder about more than I wonder about my own. So that I find my soul clapping its hands for yours more than my own. Wonderful words of Mary Oliver. You have no idea what a gift it is to stand up here and look out at all of you. It truly is a gift. You are a miracle. That's right, you are a miracle. I am a miracle. We all are miracles. It's a miracle that you and I are here today, living, breathing, enjoying this beautiful holiday celebration. Say it with me, won't you? I am a miracle. miracle. Don't believe it? Well, let's look at what it took for you, for me, for us to be here today. And I don't mean just waking up this morning and getting in our cars and driving here, although there are elements of miracle around that. (laughs) But consider, consider how unlikely it is, how unlikely it is in the grand scheme of things that the particular mix of your mother's and father's DNA out of the millions of possible combinations joined together in that one particular moment in time to make you, to make you, One little molecule's difference, and you wouldn't be you. Or consider how unlikely it is that your mother and father even met out of all the billions of people on the planet. They met at that particular time, these two particular people, whose lives were just as miraculous as ours are, they somehow crossed paths. Now in my family, we hear the story about about the fact that when my mother first met my father, she didn't want to have anything to do with him. And he had to basically convince her over a period of years to go out with her. So had my mother not relented, I wouldn't be here today. And how many of you have similar stories? Think how unlikely it is that we are here today. So say it again with me. I am a miracle. Now, if you multiply the odds against just your own mother and father getting together when they did, by the number of generations that came before them, you begin to appreciate how miraculous it is that we're here. Simply by chance, or perhaps by fate, your grandmothers and grandfathers and theirs and theirs and theirs had to have gotten together just as they did, when they did, how they did, to bring you here today. All it would have taken for you not to be sitting here would be some accident on your great-great-great-grandfather's farm when he was a little boy, or maybe a terrible, harsh winter a thousand years ago, or maybe just some small little microbe or virus. Say it again. I am a miracle. Now, if that wasn't enough, let's take it to a whole other level. We're going to get cosmic for a minute. Because all these human interactions are one thing through the generations. But think about how the universe had to come together, too. Out of the Big Bang, all the matter that matters had to come together to form the Earth just as it is, with water and oxygen and all the minerals that make up parts of us. And what are the odds of that? What are the odds of that? And this planet Earth had to be orbiting around a star, giving off just the right amount of heat, and we had to be at just the right distance from that star to support life. 
a few thousand miles different one way or another, and none of us would be here. So say it again with me. I am a miracle. Are you convinced? Are you convinced? It doesn't stop there. Think about the evolutionary chain, how life started out as just these tiny microscopic single-celled organisms that changed and adapted and evolved into complex animals that eventually became humans. If you take all this together, if you take all this together from our parents to our planet, you can't help but be astounded. It boggles the mind, truly, when we think about our lives this way. In comparison, really, it makes the chances of winning the Powerball seem, seem easy, right? It seems like a sure thing compared to these odds. We have already won the cosmic lottery. We have already won the cosmic lottery. So say to me one last time, say it with me, I am a miracle. Now turn to one of your neighbors and say to them, you are a miracle. If, if I were Oprah standing up here in front of you, I'd be up here like selling, like giving away cards. You are a miracle. You are a miracle. You are a miracle. It is truly miraculous that we are here. Now, some of you may be sitting there thinking, so what? So what? So what if our lives are miraculous? And I suppose that's a fair question, if you don't share my sense of awe at this. After all, even, even if we're miraculous, we kind of take our lives for granted sometimes. But first and foremost, what, what this means, this miracle that we are, is that everyone we meet is a miracle. Everyone we meet, no exceptions. And I want to pause for a second here and say that that includes Michael Brown, it includes Eric Garner, it includes Tamir Rice, regardless of whether they might have been illegally selling cigarettes or possibly have shoplifted or were playing with a toy gun. Everyone, every person's existence, their very being is a source of wonder and amazement and blessing. Everyone. And this is part of our universalist theology. Here in our church, we're fond of saying that everyone has inherent worth and dignity, that all people are worthy. I really like to say everyone is a miracle. The second reason that it's important to remember how miraculous our lives are is that we're all part of the same miracle. We're part of the same miracle. We share the same roots, the same origins. If we trace ourselves back far enough, we share common ancestors. And if we trace ourselves back even farther, we find that we come from common elements and common stars. We are in true fellowship with each other, with everyone we meet, full communion. We are part of a mighty family. And that's not just an expression, it's a reality. We're part of a mighty family, the same family, regardless of the color of our skin or the shape of our eyes or the, the size of our nose. We're part of the same family. And what that means, of course, is that we're stuck with each other. We're stuck with each other because you can't choose your family, can you? Now, we can avoid each other if we want to. Like when we decide not to invite crazy Eddie, Uncle Eddie to our Thanksgiving dinner. But... We can only avoid each other for so long. You see, we keep getting thrown together in all these crazy combinations, whether it's at school or at our jobs or here at church even. We keep bumping into members of our family. And it's like something or someone is telling us, hey, hey, you guys have got to learn to get along. You've got to learn to get along. And some of us do, and some of us don't. Some of us are pretty good at being with others, and some of us would really rather not bother. But as this one crazy mixed up family that's all related, where deep down we're all the same, the bottom line is that we've got to figure this out. We've got to figure this out. This is the season of miracles. This is the season of miracles. A drop of oil burning in a lamp for eight nights. A baby born in a stable 
who will come and save the world. What this season asks of us is to believe. To believe. Not necessarily to believe in those miracles, but to believe that each of us is a miracle. And that each of us is that miracle. Each of us is that mir miracle. That we are the ones born to save the world. That we are the oil that lights the lamp of truth and compassion and hope. Every single one of us. So say it with me one more time like you mean it. I am a miracle. And now say it to each other like you mean it. You are a miracle. May it be so.